All right, I'm gonna talk about working memory and mental workload in Coagulator. You may not be familiar with the term working memory, but it's very closely related to short-term memory. Uh, short-term memory is the ability to hold a limited amount of information in mind for a limited amount of time. Working memory is the ability to manipulate the information being held in short-term memory. So it's the difference between holding a few digits in mind and manipulating those digits that are being held in mind. So adding them up, for example. Working memory is limited capacity. You can hold about seven pieces of information in working memory. And as soon as five seconds after you've added a memory, you can begin to forget it. Now, the fact that it's limited capacity and limited durability makes it a cognitive bottleneck. What that means for us is that the more information that we're juggling in memory, the harder it seems the task is, the higher the mental workload is perceived to be. So that's actually a powerful concept because we can model the amount of information being held in working memory and then learn something about what the perceived mental workload might be. That is how hard the user is working. All right, so there are two ways to model uh, working memory in Cogulator. One is an automated method and one is manual. If you wanna use the automated method, you can just go down in the bottom left of the Gantt chart and make sure it's set to do auto, uh, automate working memory. That little underlined word there, you can toggle from between do and do not if you want to automate or not automate. Now, when you're using automated working memory, Cogulator works for these keywords, look, search, hear, store, recall, and think. And wherever it sees them, it adds one chunk to working memory. All right, if you, that's okay but it doesn't give you a lot of control. And there's a lot of situations where that's gonna give you a kind of marginal, if it, at best, uh, estimate of working memory load. The better way to go is usually manual working memory load. And there's two ways to do that. One, anytime Cogulator sees the store operator, it doesn't matter if it's in an automated mode or manual mode, anytime it sees store, it adds one chunk to working memory. Okay, so that's nice. The best way to go, and the way I would recommend everybody proceed, is to use chunk naming. Chunk naming is a pretty new feature in Cogulator, and let me explain how it works. So, chunks are pieces of information, pieces of related information that are held together in memory. A chunk is something like, my phone number when I was a kid was 897-4987. That's one chunk to me. You, having presumably heard that for the first time right now, would consider that seven chunks or seven pieces of information, all right? In chunk naming, we tell Cogulator where the chunks are in our model, and Cogulator uses that information to give you working memory load and predict mental workload. Chunk naming is actually really simple to implement. All you have to do is place angled brackets around the piece of information that you're calling a chunk. Okay, so on the top line, there's no uh, chunk naming being used. Same thing in the second line, except for we're using the brackets to name that chunk. So that enables all the cool features that chunk naming brings. Namely, we can look and see predictions of forgetting in the model. We can see predictions of mental workload, uh, and we can get much better estimates of working memory load. All right, so let's take a look at an example model in Cogulator, all right? I'm gonna bring up the Gantt chart. So what this is a model of is an air traffic controller accepting an aircraft into the sector. Now, anytime a new aircraft comes into the sector, they need to do some data entry to accept it. They need to talk to that aircraft and the pilot will call in and they'll respond. And then some controllers do some data uh, entry housekeeping. And basically this is a method to remind them that they've talked to the aircraft. All right, so we see some chunk naming going on here. We see our angle brackets and the chunks are highlighted with a different color. Um, what I wanna do is demonstrate what chunk naming uh, provides if we use it. So let's go down here into the housekeeping task. We see look at 321. That's a unique number associated with just that aircraft. So the pilot, uh, rather the controller needs to look at uh, the screen, get that piece of information, 321, and then they're gonna type it in with a command. The, the one three command is the command that they use to uh, enter the reminder. So I look at 321 and then I type in my one slant three command with 321 so that the computer system knows I wanna do the one slant three command, the reminder command 
with aircraft associated with 321. Now imagine I get interrupted. I'm just going to use this think operator and it's going to last for 60 seconds just as a stand in for some kind of interruption. I'll hit reload and now see what happens. 321 is red now. Well, why is that? Let's look and see what Cogulator is telling us. It says 321 is not in memory. Maybe it's been forgotten. You can add it with the store. In essence, it took so long between originally getting the information that I need and going to type it that I've forgotten it. So in real life, what would probably happen is I, uh, you know, I get the information I need. Somebody interrupts me for some amount of time. I go in here and I type uh, look again. And essentially what I'm modeling is I look at 321. Somebody interrupts me. I forget that information, so I have to look at 321 again, and then I can type the information in. I'll also note real quickly that if I get rid of the think and I get rid of this second uh, look at, I'm going to get rid of the brackets around 321. Notice here again, uh, we get the 321 lit up. I'm trying to type something based on something in memory, but I've not added it anywhere to memory because I haven't used the angle brackets. Cogulator is going to say, this is not in memory. Maybe it's forgotten. In this case, it wasn't forgotten. It was never there in the first place. So again, just adding the angle brackets will get me back in business. And now this is a, cog a chunk that is named that Cogulator can reference and model in memory. Now, let's look at one other example really quick, uh, middle mass CM. This is a more uh, advanced method, and we can look at a couple other things, or a more advanced model, we can look at a couple other things. So one thing we see right away is a ton of information being added to working memory. Each square here represents one chunk, and each time a new chunk is added, we get a new square, and you can see it building up, building up, building up. And as I scroll left to right, and we go over here, you can see different chunks decaying over time. If I were to jump in here before a chunk disappeared and rehearse it, that is add some activation to it so it won't fall out of memory by referencing it again, then the activation would go up and we'd see that decay uh, go away and instead we'd see a nice strong signal for the chunk there. All right, so we've got lots of information we're adding to working memory, then we see these red triangles. The red triangles mean that uh, information has been lost from working memory because you've added so much information to working memory. So an earlier chunk you added has now been forgotten because you're over the capacity limit of seven. And then we've got these dots. There's four dots here, five here, and seven here. Uh, this is an experimental exp uh, feature in Cogulator. Essentially what it's doing is it's saying, okay, you went to get a piece of information at this time, and based on the availability, I'm going to estimate the mental workload on a scale to 1 to 10. So this would not be unlike having somebody sit in front of you and saying, OK, you're doing some tasks. What's the mental workload right now on a scale of 1 to 10? Cogulator is saying that if you ask that question right now, it's estimating the answer would be somewhere around a 4. There's four dots. If you asked it a little bit later in the model, it'd be about a 7. There's seven dots here. So we've learned several things. One. We've gone over working memory capacity several times. That's a definite bad sign right from the start. Two, our average working memory chunks are 5.6. That's really high. Remember, our limit is seven, and something around three or four would be a reasonable or manageable amount of working memory. And two, uh, three, when we look at the working memory uh, mental workload estimates, they get as high as seven, and that's, that's getting pretty high. Uh, you would almost never see like a nine or a 10. So that's Cogulator in a nutshell, and that's chunk naming in a, works, a nutshell. It's a feature that takes a little bit to wrap your brain around, but it's very simple to implement. All you need is these uh, angled brackets around the piece of information that you're modeling. And Cogulator does the heavy lifting, the math behind the panel. If you're interested in the math it does, you can go to cogulator.io, uh, click on the sources button, and then head over, that'll take you over to the GitHub repository. In the GitHub repository, you're going to look for the memory class. That has all the algorithms we're using for working memory modeling. I'll put these two models we just looked at, this mental math one where somebody's adding numbers in their head, and the controller one that I showed earlier uh, right here up on the website if you want to take those down and play with them. Uh, they'll be in the resources section. And that's it. Thanks.